Dramatic breaking news reaching us from Westminster that Ian Duncan Smith uh, is to resign as the Work and Pensions Secretary. Uh, he is complaining, he says, of Treasury pressure to make cuts to the benefit system. You will know that uh, the Prime Minister has been uh, speaking in Brussels, uh, saying that plans to uh, change disability benefit are now uh, being kicked, as they say, into the long grass. Uh, let's go live to Westminster. Our chief political correspondent, John Cray, joining us. Uh, and John, in his resignation uh, letter, there's, uh, I suppose, what one can describe as a hand grenade here for the Chancellor. Indeed, there's clearly been a furious bust-up today over the row over the proposed disability cuts. Now, within the past hour, first of all, we had the Treasury uh, talking, actually using the phrase, this is going to be kicked into the long grass. Now, the reason for that is because Tory rebels were claiming there were more than 20 going to vote against these very controversial cuts. And within the last couple of minutes, we have this dramatic letter from Ian Duncan Smith, uh, where he talks about, I have attempted to work within the constraints that, that you, that's the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, set. He talks about a compromise too far. Uh, he talks about um, the... Um, he talks about uh, the... Um, Changes to benefits defensible in narrow terms, can, uh, they're not defensible the way they were placed within a budget that benefits higher earning taxpayers. So that's a pop at the Chancellor saying that the budget benefits higher earning taxpayers. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about um, uh, fiscal uh, self-imposed restraints, more and more perceived as political rather than in the national interest. And then in his last paragraph of a one, two, three, uh, six or seven paragraph letter, it is therefore... With enormous regret, I have decided to resign. So this, uh, uh, there's been talk of Ian Duncan Smith having bust-ups with the Chancellor many times before and friction, but now clearly Mr uh, Duncan Smith's patience has snapped and uh, he has resigned. There's clearly been an enormous bust-up uh, between him and the Chancellor. And remember, the Prime Minister's been in Brussels most of the day at a migration summit. The Prime Minister was talking uh, a little earlier about the need for uh, more discussions on this and doing the right thing. Well, clearly, uh, Mr Duncan Smith uh, wanted to go one way and the Chancellor and the Prime Minister said, no, we're facing a big rebellion on our back benches. And so Mr uh, Duncan Smith has snapped. Um, one of the things that will have made him snap is a government quote where it says this was not an integral part of the budget, it was a DWP package that came out beforehand. Well, that's all very well, but uh, the cuts were factored into the calculations that came in the budget, and uh, Labour are claiming that it's uh, ludicrous, in their words, to say that these uh, DWP cuts were not part of the whole budget package. But... The headline news, the bombshell news, is that Ian Duncan Smith has quit, and so the government's whole welfare strategy, no doubt the Labour Party will say, is in tatters and in disarray, uh, because one of the great architects of all the reforms, uh, Mr Duncan Smith has been in this job since 2010, brought in all sorts of reforms, many of them very controversial. The latest proposals, big cuts uh, worth uh, £4.4 billion pounds, uh, in payments to disabled people. Well, he's quit because of a row, principally with the Treasury, but obviously partly with the PM as well. John, I'm just sort of looking through the political reverberations and consequences of this, again going back to his resignation letter, where he says, too often my team and I have been pressured in the immediate run-up to a budget or fiscal event to deliver yet more reductions to the working age benefit bill. There's been too much emphasis on money-saving exercise and not enough awareness from the Treasury in particular that the government's vision of a new welfare-to-work system will not be repeatedly salami-sliced. Now, of course, this will have huge ramifications for George Osborne's uh, plans to, to go for the Tory party leadership because he's basically indicating uh, that because of political pressure, uh, these plans were basically being pushed through by the Treasury rather than by the DWP. 
Indeed. I mean, we've always known that ch chancellors of the Exchequer always exert enormous influence on other cabinet ministers and bully other departments. We heard all that during Gordon Brown's time at the Treasury. But he is making a similar sort of accusation that you used to hear Labour ministers make about Gordon Brown. Yes, that's the pen penultimate paragraph there, uh, just the, uh, the top one of those two bottom ones on the letter there. Uh, re a real attack on the Chancellor. Remember, of course, uh, Ian Duncan Smith is one of those half dozen or so cabinet ministers who is uh, um, uh, one of the uh, yes. campaigning for Britain to leave the EU. Well, he'll be even more unfettered now and free to speak out. And he is going to be a very dangerous opponent uh, for both the Prime Minister and particularly the Chancellor. Um, when a senior minister quits like this, there are often uh, enormous uh, repercussions. A civil war breaks out in a political party. There will be those who are claiming tonight, no doubt the government's political opponents, that this is uh, the whole cabinet beginning to fall apart. Well, that, of course, will be denied by number 10. Uh, Mr Osborne has been really put under pressure here, though. It's a shattering blow for Mr Cameron and particularly Mr Osborne. And, and to underline that, John, of course, uh, the, the government's response and the Prime Minister actually making uh, reference to this from Brussels tonight was because so many backbenchers uh, came together so quickly, indicating that effectively there was a backbench rebellion underway. Uh, and again, a political miscalculation, it seems, from the Chancellor. Yes, there were, uh, the leader of the rebels, Andrew Percy MP, uh, claimed there were uh, significantly more than 20 prepared to rebel against the government. Remember, this is only a week after uh, the government lost a vote on Sunday trading last week. That was a measure thought to have been uh, well known to have been put, driven through by George Osborne. Um, the, the MPs were saying that one uh, Tory MP, Jason McCartney, said, I'm a one nation conservative. I want to look after people who need to be looked after. And uh, uh, other MPs have said that uh, it was, this was dead in the water, it wasn't going to get through. Um, the, uh, the, the Tory candidate for Mayor of London was sacked as patron of a disabled people's charity yeah. in his constituency, along with a couple of other Tory MPs in similar circumstances. It was all set to blow up into a big row if it had been forced, they put it to a vote. Well, it's not likely to be put to a vote now, but it's blown up into an even bigger row with the resignation of somebody who, let's not forget, a very senior cabinet minister, a former party leader, and also a standard bearer of the Eurosceptic right at a a time when uh, Mr Osborne was trying to uh, avoid controversy in his budget, mm. keep his Tory MPs sweet. Well, he hasn't kept Mr Duncan Smith sweet. He's uh, apoplectic with rage, as we can see in this letter, yeah, with John, some of the attacks on the Chancellor he's made. Can I, can I just ask you another question now about George Osborne, the fact that I think they were looking at, what, four and a half billion from this as a saving or a potential saving by 2020. Will Osborne now have to go back to the Treasury and recalculate the... the uh, expectations that we saw in the budget on Wednesday. Well, that's what many MPs believe, yes. 4.4 billion was the figure. Now, one of the rebels, um, in fact, I think it was Mr Percy, said, why didn't he just put a couple of P on uh, fuel duty? Uh, there were a number of MPs who thought, uh, that at the ta thought that with petrol and diesel prices so low, it wouldn't have done any harm just to put a penny or two on fuel duty. Uh, but that was resisted and rejected by Mr Osborne. And I remember putting that question to Treasury officials on Budget Day. They said, no because putting money on fuel duty, on cars, uh, other vehicles, business vehicles and so on, is damaging for households and for businesses. So he rejected that. Uh, the problem for the Tories is the perception, as in fact Mr Duncan Smith says in his letter, uh, the, he talks about um, a, budget, uh, a budget that benefits higher earning taxpayers. Uh, and so... Um, here we have a real clash of ideology between two senior cabinet ministers. Uh, Mr Duncan Smith, whether he's was been considering this resignation for some weeks, he must have thought about resignation at the beginning of the e EU referendum campaign. But, of course, to keep the cabinet together, Mr Cameron suspended cabinet uh, collective responsibility to allow those half dozen or so ministers to campaign to leave the EU. Well, Mr uh, Duncan Smith is well and truly free now to speak out 
out on that and becomes a much more dangerous opponent yeah. of the Remain campaign. Uh, that's, that's within Tory ranks, of course. John, what about Labour now, who have got this uh, opportunity that perhaps Jeremy Corbyn didn't have at the dispatch box to come back and accuse the Tory party of effectively being, well, the nasty party again in its attacks on disabled people, as some may see it? Well, in fairness to Mr Corbyn, in his response to the budget on Wednesday, he went straight in on this issue of mm. cuts in disability benefits. That was what he... Uh, uh, that was the, the main central point of his attack, coming immediately after the Chancellor's uh, sp the budget speech. And, of course, it's very fashionable, a lot of uh, MPs and Tories in particular, to say, oh, we haven't got a decent opposition. You have to say, in the last few months, the, the, the Labour opposition, albeit in the House of Lords, has defeated the government on tax credit its U-turn there. Last week on Sunday trading, in the past 24 hours they've been claiming a victory. They claim they persuaded the government to do a U-turn and go to Brussels uh, and with a and cap in hand on the tampon tax. And Labour will be cock-a-hoop here. They will claim, of course, that it's their pressure that has led to this clash within the Cabinet and led, uh, ultimately, to Mr Duncan Smith's uh, resignation. So Labour will claim mm. it's down to their pressure. Uh, Tories, no doubt, will dispute that, though. John, for the moment, thank you for bringing us that breaking news in Westminster. Just to recap, uh, Ian Duncan-Smith uh, dramatically...